Well, good morning. It's Monday morning tea time with Mick, my little KCC mug. Hey, I hope you're off to a good start this Monday morning, mid-November, Thanksgiving just around the corner. Hey, hey, what do you say? Well, I want to encourage us with God's word today. I'm reminded of James 4:17, where James says this to us. Anyone who knows what he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. Let's stop and pause there for a moment as it relates to our walk with Jesus. When we think of sinning, most of us look at commission. What I mean by that is we, we kind of look at it from the things we know we shouldn't do, like greed and lust and hatred and envy and jealousy, things in the heart that we know that are from Scripture we should not do. And when we do them, we sin. It leads us to actions that we regret. And those are all sin, absolutely. But James is not talking about those things. It's rare that we talk about the things that we know God wants us to do and we simply disobey him. Like, I want you to share with somebody. I want you to love on somebody. I want you to go to this nation and be a missionary. I want you to quit your job and go here. I want you to give this money to this person. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. There are so many things that the Holy Spirit tells us to do that often because of our many reasons, because of our schedule, because of our lack and inability to listen to the Holy Spirit, that we truly miss his promptings of what he wants us to do. A lot of those things line up with truly being the hands and feet of Jesus and making him known. But for many Christians today, we simply are in what I call survival mentality. Thus, we never really look about, look at or how he can use our lives we really look at him, how he can help us. So in other words, we look at Jesus and the church as some sort of a commodity to us, and we will benefit from it. And yes, it's true that we benefit from being a part of the body of Christ, and we benefit from having a relationship with Jesus. But it's not just for our benefit. It's for us to be used by him in ways that will change the world. If we truly listened to the small promptings of the Holy Spirit, it would be amazing the change that would happen in one day around us with so many Christians. And James exhorts us to say this, if you're not listening to what he wants you to do, you are actually sinning. Let me put it this way. There are many of us that are in the same holding pattern in our walk with God simply because he still is calling us to do something that we simply won't or are not willing to do. As a result, we are in the same spot, spiritually speaking, because we're not willing to go there. And it's not until we say yes that he's, we're actually going to be able to fulfill and experience the life that he always intended for you and I to have. Jesus said that he came that we'd have life to its full. That full life happens when we say yes to every aspect. We don't get to choose. We simply say yes to him. There is the secret of knowing the will of God. There is the secret of knowing the fulfillment and the peace of God by obeying him in all things that he wants us to do and not making any excuses as to why we can't or never saying we will wait until tomorrow for tomorrow never arrives. So I encourage you today as I encourage myself that you and I become people that will simply obey him in the big and the small and to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Therein lies the difference. Because he loves you. He always has and he always will. He goes before you and behind you and absolutely nothing can take you out of his hand. I pray that you have a blessed week. And to this truth I say, all right and amen.